Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to tell you what I learned at my doctor visit this morning about the results of the MRI that I had last week. I had an MRI on my right ankle, which has still not healed from my fall in early December 2020. I had the MRI on Wednesday, April 14th. And today I am filming this on Monday, April 19th. I had an appointment with my podiatrist this morning to go over the results. Okay, he came into the exam room right away with a model of the foot and ankle bones and everything to show me what exactly this report says. It was a little bit surprising to both of us, I think. We both thought that what we were going to find out was that something was wrong with the perineal tendon tendons that go which i've described in other videos that go like behind the bone in my foot and up the side of my leg that attach the foot to the leg and that's what i think both of us were kind of expecting he said in the appointment today that that's what he was very concerned about was that something was wrong with those tendons those are fine that's not what the problem is however what actually is wrong i almost wonder if it's worse <laughs> Okay, first I should say that after learning what's wrong, everything I'm feeling makes so much more sense. However, now that I know what's actually wrong, I also am pretty freaked out <laughs> to be walking around and putting weight on it. A multi-planar, multi-sequence MRI of the right ankle was performed using fluid sensitive and anatomic sequences. Well, first I'm gonna tell you some of the small things that they ruled out. Okay, the muscles. Nothing's wrong with any of the muscles. And miscellaneous, the plantar fascia, which goes like under the bottom of your foot, is intact. There was mild edema-like signal intensity in the sinus tarsi. Uh, no evidence of mass along the tarsal tunnel. So whatever those things are, there's a little bit of swelling, but otherwise fine. Okay, this is interesting. Fluid. There's lots of mention in this whole report about fluid and about edema or swelling in the ankle. And this one is particularly interesting. Small soft tissue ganglion posterior to the posterior talofibular ligament measuring approximately six centimeters. So a ganglion is like a cyst, so it's like a little sack of fluid. And where they're saying that is, is right behind that bone that sticks out in my ankle there. And that's where we're seeing that bulge. That's where that bulge has been the whole time. And I think that is probably even what he was saying when he said you've got quite a cankle there. So there's like a little cyst of fluid built up right in that spot, and that makes that so much sense then why that's swollen still in that spot. And then I want to mention that it says the perineal tendons are intact with minimal tendinosis, so kind of like tendinitis of those tendons. So they are seeing a little bit of, you know, inflammation or swelling in that tendon, but it's not ripped, it's not torn, it's not broken, okay? And then it also mentions that in tendons. The Achilles tendon is intact. I mean, it, it mentions again, mild fluid like buildup and swelling and stuff around some of the tendons, but basically it says that all of the tendons are intact, okay? That's the good news. What's actually wrong? First thing that's wrong, I fractured this ankle too. I actually have a fracture in the right tibia, right at the bottom of the bone. And they, I asked, why did they not see that on the original x-rays that they took on the day I got hurt? And he said, because they were, it was hidden behind the ligaments and the tendons and stuff, which makes sense. When he showed me on the model where the fracture is, it makes sense. So he said, we only would have been able to see it with the MRI. And then the big problem is I tore quite badly two ligaments. And they're very important ligaments, which I will explain. Okay, so I tore the anterior tibiofibular ligament 
So the one in the front of the ankle that connects the tibia and the fibula, which are the two bones in the lower half of your leg. And I also tore the posterior tibiofibular ligament. So that's the one that goes around the back and connects the tibia and the fibula at the bottom of your leg. So basically, I really wrecked my ankle and I tore both of the ligaments that are holding the two bones together at the bottom of your leg and you don't want those bones not to be held together. They need to stay together. And so they're just kind of loose. Now that I know that it's both a posterior and an anterior ligament, that makes total sense why I'm having pain in the two specific places that I am. And definitely it sounds like the posterior one is worse. And then it mentions another avulsion fracture in the posterior lateral distal tibial plafond. And it measures approximately 15 millimeters transverse by six millimeters something with approximately one millimeter displacement and partial thickness tearing of the posterior tibiofibular ligament. He was very serious and quite stern today. He took this very seriously. He says, this is the kind of ankle injury that they often see in like basketball players, like professional basketball players. And he said, when you hear that like a basketball player has injured his ankle and they're out for like three months, it's because of this. This is the kind of injury that they will have had. I think he would have been good to go and do surgery like right now, this week. But he asked me, have you noticed any improvement in the past month? And I said, yeah, a little bit. And one thing I noticed is I have a few times now been able to go down the stairs every other foot. You guys check it out. This is the second time today. I'm kind of awkward and spastic, but I can actually go down the stairs every other step. And I'm not holding on to the railing. Look at me. Hooray! Okay, it still hurts when I do that, but I can do it and I don't feel like I'm gonna fall, which is an improvement over where I was before. But I guess what makes me nervous is I still definitely have a lot of pain. And so his recommendation is, as of today, he says, you must come back in six weeks. And so I have another appointment on June 1st, which is in six weeks in one day. And he said, at that time, I'm going to do a little test on you. He said, I'm going to, uh, t- t- what do you say? <laughs> Tend- do some kind of tension to the ankle. He's going to move it somehow or push on it or something to see if it hurts. And then he's going to look at it with his fluoroscope. And if it hasn't completely healed, if it still doesn't feel right, you know, completely normal by then, then I have to have the surgery. This was not optional. This was, you have to have the surgery. And then he explained the surgery to me. And I really don't think he would have been doing that if he didn't think that it's highly likely that I'm going to need the surgery. And I guess after I got home and I was thinking about it, I kind of feel like, yeah, maybe it still is improving, but... If it hasn't completely healed in almost five months, is it really gonna finish healing in six weeks or less? I kind of doubt it. And so I'm pretty discouraged about that. I mean, obviously I want my ankle to be fully healed and back to normal and I don't wanna be in pain anymore. And he said, the main thing that's gonna happen if we don't surgically repair it is you're gonna have arthritis in your ankle for the rest of your life. And basically, I think he was saying, you're going to be in pain for the rest of your life. And the other thing that just made me and like Megan nervous when I was explaining it to her is basically he's saying like nothing's holding the bottom of my leg together right now. (laughs) It's just loose. And he did warn me. He's like, no high impact activities, no jumping, no running. And I told him, I said, well, the more I walk even, the more it hurts. So yikes. (laughs) I I understand that I'm probably going to need surgery. I'm really not happy about that. I am relieved that he gave us that six more weeks because Megan will be done with school. 
So yay, it, it won't interfere with her with school and she won't be all stressed out trying to take care of me. I mean, surgery itself scares me. There's that. And then what really scares me and freaks me out is the recovery. Because I had such a hard time just after I hurt myself trying to do the most basic things. Walking to the bathroom, sitting down on the toilet, taking a shower was almost impossible. I just about died doing that. I was in tears. I couldn't take a bath. I couldn't get back out of the bathtub. Getting dressed was impossible. I mean, just the most basic, simple functions. And I didn't ask him if I'd have a cast or what the situation would be after I had the surgery. And I'll tell you what he told me about the surgery in a second. But just the recovery completely freaks me out. And this house is the worst possible place you would want to do recovery from some kind of foot or ankle surgery. There are so many steps. And my mom was like, oh, should we put your bedroom downstairs in the den? And I'm like, that's not the problem. It's not a matter of, it's everything. <laughs> it's just everything. There's, when you can't walk and you can't drive, that's a really big deal. When you can't put any weight on one foot at all, I just don't think people get it. And there's a couple people that are kind of annoying me right now after they heard this news that are just, they, they don't understand. They don't understand what it's like to not be able to walk and stuff when you're, you know, you normally can. And not being able to drive is really a problem. Anyway, <laughs> he told me, okay, this is what the surgery will involve. He would be drilling a hole in the tibia and suturing it with some kind of stuff, he explained what it was, to the fibia, and then securing it with a titanium button. And I asked him about that. I'm like, oh, is that going to mess me up for going through security at the airport? And he's like, no, don't worry about it. They're just going to have to wand you. And I think I'd get a little card or whatever, <laughs> you know, explaining that I now have metal in my leg. <laughs> he didn't talk anything about the recovery, and I didn't think to ask when I was with him in the appointment. He was mainly just very stern about, you must come back in six weeks. And he said, and if in four weeks you can tell, no, it's really not getting any better, then you call us and you come sooner. That's what he said. So he was really firm about that. I think that he's kind of wishing we had done the surgery already. That's kind of the impression I got from him. I did not get a sense of real optimism from him that it's going to finish healing in the next six weeks, but he's giving me that anyway. I asked him, why are you giving me the six weeks? And he said, because you feel like you did have some improvement in the past month. That's the only reason he's doing that. Otherwise, I think he'd do the surgery right now. I forgot to ask about recovery when I was with him. I mean, it was a pretty quick appointment. I mean, he was explaining very thoroughly with the model, showing me the injury on the model. And then we were looking at my foot and pointing things out and talking about it. And then he was showing me and explaining the surgery on the model. And, you know, and then we were talking about when I had to come back and stuff like that. And I just completely didn't even think about, you know, asking him what would happen after the surgery, if I have the surgery. And so after I got home and we had lunch and I talked to the kids a little bit and everything, I called the clinic again and asked them, can you have somebody call me back, you know, check with him and then tell me, I need to know how long a recovery I'd be facing and specifically how long I could, I would have to go without being able to drive. Because this will affect our entire summer, our plans to go visit New England, visit Andrew, scope out potential places we might want to move to or move there this summer, selling the house. I can't, this is another thing people don't seem to get. I'm in constant pain and I can't walk completely normally. I can't be deep cleaning a house or packing a house or moving furniture or anything like that right now. I can't do any of that. It's going to be hard enough to do that when I'm completely fully healed and well because I don't have any help. But there's no way I can be doing any of that now. And so that's kind of messing that whole thing up. And then just like we wanted to do fun, you want to do fun things and go places and do things with your kids in the summer. 
okay? And I wanted to travel and make more videos for you guys and things like that. So I don't know what I had in mind when I called and asked this question. But so the nurse called me back and she said, okay, well, for this type of surgery, you're going to have six to eight weeks of bone healing and then uh, 14 weeks total of, of healing because, you know, it involves the ligaments and everything. And I was like, okay, so that's 14 weeks that I wouldn't be able to walk or drive. And she's like, yes. <sighs> I'm pretty upset about this. <laughs> That takes us, like, if I go back on June 1st and then he does, that's a Tuesday, and he does surgery, even if he did it that Friday, that means I won't be able to walk or drive until the latter half of September. I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> that's a long time. And I don't want to be in pain for the rest of my life, and I want to be active for the rest of my life, but that's a long time. And I've already been in pain for almost five months, and that's a whole summer lost. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, it was one thing to be cooped up when we were cooped up for the pandemic anyway, and it was winter and it's cold and you don't want to go outside, and but that's a long time to be recovering. and. Just thinking about trying to do that in this house with all these stairs, it's just a nightmare. I'm glad that I know now. I'm glad that I know what's wrong. I do wish he would have done the MRI at the beginning. Maybe it wouldn't have made a difference because maybe he still would have wanted to wait this long anyway to see if it healed on its own. I'm not sure. And maybe insurance would not have approved an MRI that early. I'm not sure. There's nothing we can do about it now. I mean, I'm glad to know what's wrong. It helps me to know that I'm not crazy. Because when you're telling people you're in pain this long and you're limping for this long, it's hard, you know, you kind of start to feel like people are like, oh, come on, you must be better now. You know, no, it still really hurts. <laughs> And to know exactly what's wrong in there and what's going on is kind of a relief to know, okay, I'm not crazy. There's something really wrong. But the idea of surgery and that very long recovery is pretty awful. And I'm not very, opt I just personally am not very optimistic that it's going to heal on its own in the next six weeks and I'm not going to need the surgery. I just feel like that's pretty unlikely. I mean, that's what I asked him. I said, are you telling me there's a chance it could still heal on its own? And he said, yeah, there's a chance. <laughs> okay. This affects some things. I mean, it gives us a little bit of answers. Well, it does and it doesn't. I still don't know for sure whether I'm going to be enduring surgery and a long recovery. I won't know that until June 1st. But I know it's a possibility now. I can kind of, you know, be thinking about that. Honestly, I really wish we could get out of this house before then and move someplace else with no stairs, you know, like a handicap accessible rental or something. I really wish I could do that. That would make me feel so much better to know that I'm not having to deal with living in this house. I hate living in this house in the summer anyway. We have so many issues with this house in the summer. Everything that goes wrong with this house always happens in the summer. Leaks, insects, the stupid bats in the attic, all that stuff always happens in the summer. I always have so many issues with this house in the summer and it's so stressful and we don't have central air because we have radiators and we get so hot and miserable with the humidity in this house in the summer. I would just love to be able to move before June 1st so that if I have to have the surgery, I'm in a place that we're going to be a lot more comfortable and it's going to be a lot easier for me. But I don't I don't see any way I can make that happen. Unless somebody wants to like send us a bunch of money <laughs> and buy my house off of me or something. I you know, I don't know. We don't have any money for like a security deposit and rent is so much more than my mortgage. I don't have enough income right now to pay to rent something. I found out today also that I heard back from 
someone in the school district who has been uh, talking with me about what the virtual option is going to be for the fall. We're going to find out on Monday, a week from today, what that virtual option will look like. And that will help us decide what Megan's going to do for school in the fall and Ben probably too. Unfortunately, if I end up having to have surgery, the one option that's probably off the table would be us moving this summer and them doing school out east somewhere. That's probably not going to happen now. So it's looking pretty likely that we'll probably need to stay here, at least in this town, until Megan graduates in January. Those were the results of my MRI, and that's what's happening. My next update will probably be on June 1st, after I see the doctor again, so that's in six weeks. So be sure you're subscribed to the channel and turn the, the notification bell on so that you don't miss any updates. If you guys have any suggestions or ideas of other travel-related content I could do if I have to be recovering from surgery for over three months, that would be really great because... <laughs> I feel really bad. I mean, the pandemic has already made creating content very challenging for travel-related YouTube creators like me because traveling is kind of out. I'm doing the best I can. I hope you appreciate the content that I am putting out on my channel. But the injury to my ankles, although it did give me some additional stuff to make videos about, and they're quite popular videos too, has also made it difficult for me to do all of the things I might like to do. You know, we can't even go like on day trips around and, you know, like we did a year ago when we went to all the different state parks and stuff. I can't even do that right now. So if you have any other ideas of things that you'd like to make videos about that I can do from home while sitting, let me know in the comments. If you appreciate this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. And thank you everyone for your continued support of me and this channel. I really appreciate it. Safe travels.